So yeah, the new NextDoc Wireless turns your phone into a desktop PC, and this time we don't have to be tethered by wires. And this unit also works with several other devices, so it doesn't just need to be an Android phone. What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime Pack here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new NextDoc Wireless. Now if you're familiar with the NextDoc, you know I'm a huge fan of these. In fact, over the last couple of years, I believe we've taken a look at every release that they've put out except for one. There was one that I wasn't able to get my hands on, but uh, this is their brand new offering to the market and as the name implies, we've actually got a wireless feature here. This was shown off at the recent CES and they were kind enough to send one over for review and I'm actually super excited about this. And if you're not familiar with these next dock devices, I'll give you a little explanation. But uh, first up, as you can see, this definitely looks like a laptop. I mean, it looks like it'd be a Windows laptop, but there's no central processing unit inside of this thing. Basically, what these are meant to do is turn your phone into a laptop. We've got a keyboard, trackpad, touch display, and a built-in battery. So inside of the box, we're going to get a charger to charge up the built-in battery of the next dock. We've got USB Type-C to USB Type-C. We've also got a USB Type-C to full-size USB and full-size HDMI to mini HDMI cable. Even though this is touted as the next dock wireless, it also has wired capabilities built in. So when it comes down to it, as long as your device supports video over USB Type-C or over HDMI, you can plug it directly into the next dock wireless. The unit itself does have an oversized trackpad, which supports multi-gesture support. We've got a nice keyboard, it actually feels really good, and it is backlit, just like their newer models. It's got a built-in 44 watt hour battery, and this does support pass-through charging, so when we're plugged in through USB Type-C with our phone, it's also going to charge it up. And we've got full brightness and color control through the built-in OSD. We can also control the brightness and volume through keyboard shortcuts. Over here on the left hand side, we've got our USB Type-C video in. This is also going to give us power out. I've measured up to 15 watts with a smartphone, so it'll definitely keep it charged. And we've also got mini HDMI. Both of these ports will support 1080p 60fps, but over wireless, you're only going to get 1080p 30fps. Over here on the right hand side, we've got two more USB Type-C ports. One of these is only going to support OTG pass-through storage. The other one's going to charge up the internal battery. We've got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and we've also got a micro SD card slot over here, which will work as OTG storage. And of course, we've also got our dedicated power button. Now this does come with protective plastic over that 13 inch IPS display. We'll go ahead and get that off and then I'll power it up for the first time. Now this is really made for something like Samsung DeX or Huawei also has their own desktop operating system, but there are a lot of manufacturers jumping on this. Motorola has their Ready4 operating system built into their high-end phones, and even Red Magic has jumped in, and they're offering external screen support with their console mode, and that's something we will take a look at. But remember, since we've got a direct video in line with this, we can basically plug anything into the device itself. But the main claim to fame here is the wireless connectivity, so that's what we're going to be taking a look at. Super easy to set up, and once you boot this up, it's going to give you a quick explanation on how to get everything connected. And of course, we're going to be using wireless display mode to kind of cast the screen over to the next dock wireless, but the keyboard and mouse are going to be connected to your device using Bluetooth if you're not using a wired connection. But one thing to keep in mind is, when you're connected wirelessly to this, it's only going to work at 1080p 30fps. If we swipe down over here with two fingers, it'll bring up our OSD, full color control, we can set the brightness, we can set the volume. There's a few profiles that we can mess with. I've kind of adjusted it to my liking right now. And for my first test, I'm gonna be using a Samsung Galaxy S21. We've got Samsung DeX built in here. First thing I need to do is pair the keyboard and trackpad. We're gonna do this using Bluetooth. So we're gonna to go to our Bluetooth settings. It's gonna scan. You're gonna find the next dock, trackpad and keyboard. We're gonna connect these as two different devices. So we can actually start using this right now on the device because it's just a Bluetooth peripheral. But now we want to cast our display over to the next dock wireless. And we can mirror the display if we want to, but I'm going to go with Samsung DeX. So from the settings on your Samsung S device, you're going to have a Samsung DeX section. It's going to ask us if we want to go with a wireless connection. We're going to scan. It's going to find the next dock wireless. Give it a few seconds to kind of initialize and pair up. And there you have it. We now have Samsung DeX running on the next dock and we can use the phone as a phone while this is all running. Okay, so yeah, I thought this was pretty cool. 
Uh, it's actually great for presentations if you want to do some email checking, some document editing and things like that. But since we're using a wireless connection, there is a bit of latency here. And again, we're only running at 30 FPS. So gaming in wireless mode isn't ideal, but it does work out great for even something like photo editing. You want to do some web browsing and things like that. It's pretty cool not to be tethered. And when you're working with something like Samsung DeX, as you can see, we've got basically an Android powered laptop now working from our phone wirelessly. And one thing I probably should have already mentioned is we can actually use this just like the next dock 360. We can set it up in kind of tent mode if you want to. It'll auto rotate or you can even just kind of fold it flat and use it as a tablet. Checking out a little bit of web browsing, we'll just head over to NextDoc's website, and uh, we've got multi-gesture support on the trackpad. Everything's working out really well. Like I mentioned, we've got that backlit keyboard, and uh, you know, latency over Bluetooth isn't something you really need to worry about when you're just typing out stuff or using the trackpad itself. It really comes down to gaming at 30 FPS over this wireless connection. And that's where wired mode would really come in here. So when we're connected either over HDMI or USB Type-C, we're going to get full 1080p, 60fps, and one device I've been messing around with quite a lot recently is the new Red Magic 8 Pro. This is powered by the Snapdragon Gen 2, so we've got plenty of CPU and GPU power when it comes to gaming and emulation, or even work, and it supports alt mode over USB Type-C. So uh, we get video out of USB Type-C, and there's a couple modes that we can use here. Once we plug it in, we're going to be in mirror mode. You can see that it detected the keyboard and trackpad here, and this is all working over USB. We didn't have to connect it over Bluetooth. No latency, but uh, my favorite mode here is console mode. We're going to flip this little switch, and now you can see we've taken advantage of the full display. So this gives us a nice little layout. We can add different applications, mainly focused on gaming, but uh, this is really cool. So if we start up, let's say Minecraft, we can actually play with the built-in screen, or, since we have the trackpad and keyboard connected, we can actually use those to control our game. Now, Minecraft is one of those Android games that actually does support a keyboard and mouse really well, but with the Red Magic software, we can actually map these to basically any game, even if they don't natively support controllers. But I'll tell you what, recently one of my main use case scenarios for the next dock devices is the Steam Deck. This actually works out really great for desktop mode on the Steam Deck, but you can also game on it. We'll just go ahead and plug it into the USB Type-C port on the Steam Deck. And keep in mind, the next dock only has pass-through charge rate of 15 watts, so we'll get that slow charge indicator. We've got full touchscreen support along with the trackpad and keyboard. And if you wanted to game on this, you could actually just use the built-in controls on the Steam Deck or connect a Bluetooth controller. But I wanted to show you that we've got that extra USB Type-C port on the right-hand side of the next dock. So I'm just going to plug in an Xbox controller here. This works as kind of OTG. So we can plug in different devices here and have them work directly with the Steam Deck. Now again, you could just connect this to Bluetooth, but I wanted to show you that this is functional. And we'll go ahead and get into a little bit of gameplay. So we've got some Spider-Man Miles Morales running here, and you know, this is a harder to run game on the Steam Deck, so we're only at 720p, but it's a 60 hertz panel, and there are games that we could run at 1080p on this, like uh, let's say Half-Life 2, Left 4 Dead 2, and they look great on this display at 1080. So this is actually pretty awesome for gaming. If you're on the go and you wanted a little bit of a bigger screen, then you could use this with the Steam Deck, or basically any PC. But my main use case scenario when the Steam Deck is connected here is desktop mode. So from the main menu, we're just going to go down to the Steam icon, power, switch to desktop. And I've got this set up so both displays will be working. I'm going to be using the built-in Steam Deck screen as kind of a secondary display. But we've got our main display here on the next dock. And you can configure this any way you want to from the settings. But it's actually great for having that bigger display in desktop mode. You can get some work done. You can do some web browsing, watch some videos on a bigger display. And this is really a workhorse. I mean, it's got plenty of power for like photo editing and things like that. And having this trackpad, keyboard, extra battery, and a 13.3 inch 1080p display built in works out very, very well. We've got a quick video demo I like to test. I'm just at 1080p, 60fps, but the Steam Deck does have enough power to kind of play YouTube at 4K60. 
But yeah, I really do like the new Nextdoc Wireless. It's great to have that feature built in. I mean, you will work with some latency when you're connected wirelessly from a phone, but we're connected over Wi-Fi. This has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in. It's not MM Wave technology with zero latency or anything like that. But like we saw, it does work great if you're just doing some web browsing, email checking, some document editing there in wireless mode. But then, you know, when it's time to get down to the nitty gritty and you need 60 1080p, just plug it right into the USB Type-C port and you're good to go. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning more about NextDoc and what they have to offer, or if you're interested in picking one of these NextDoc wireless units up, I will leave some links in the description. And, you know, if you've got any questions, let me know down below. But like always, thanks for watching.